Music Magazine. I'm here with Mike Spritzer from Devil Driver. Awesome. All right, man. So, how are you enjoying Pittsburgh so far? Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh. I've uh, never played this venue before. All right, and, really? And uh, it's usually a really good crowd for us, but I haven't really ventured out too far today. I've been uh, sitting on the bus most of the day. Everyone's fighting traffic right now, so they're still showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, you're on tour right now, like co-headlining tour, right? Yes. With White Chapel and all the other bands. How's that going so far? Great. I think it's a good match. Yeah. Well, you guys were talking about touring together since uh, Mayhem didn't work out. Yeah. From what I heard was uh, Jägermeister was supposed to be one of the sponsors for that tour, and I guess they pulled out, and the stage that they were going to sponsor went away, and mm -hmm. that's uh, the stage that I believe both of us. Uh, had tentative offers for, and uh, so we, when that went away, we decided to, to uh, put this together. It's not a bad idea. No, yeah, man, it's been a really, really good tour. All right, now do you guys have any like tours coming up afterwards? Uh, we have tentative plans to go to Australia in uh, later this year, and then there's there's also another tour that we may or may not do. Um, nothing set in stone, but pretty much the agenda for the rest of this year is to work on a new record. Mm -hmm. All right. So, out of all the bands that are on the tour, you have quite a lot. Is there any favorite band that you kind of enjoy watching a lot, or are you more? White Chapel is probably my s second most favorite metal band at the moment. Um, I haven't really given a lot of attention to their newest record yet. Mm -hmm. uh, just no reason why, but their their self titled record just completely blew me away, mm -hmm. and uh, really opened up my eyes to White Chapel and uh, them and Gojira are. Definitely the the two bands, Top of the list. metal bands that I listen to the most these days. Awesome. All right, your last album was Winter Kills. How did that like um, go over with all your fans and like touring wise? I would say better than it has, um, or the best it has since probably since Last Kind of Words. Mm -hmm. The uh, just an overwhelming positive response from everybody, and especially with the song Sale. Which yeah, I heard was you guys did that. Very an off, you know, the wall thing for us to do, and uh, we were working on the record, me, Jeff, and John, and you know, Des sent us a text saying, you know, we were debating on what we, you know, the record label wanted us to do a cover, and I personally love doing covers. I had a great time doing, um, especially Black Soul Choir by Sixteen Horsepower on, mm -hmm. uh, that we put out on Beast, and which a lot of people think is our our own song because there's not a whole lot of metalheads that listen to Sixteen Horsepower. They're like an alternative country band. From Denver, but very dark, and mm -hmm. uh, I've been listening to him since high school. Um, the bass player from Flog and Molly, he wasn't Flog and Molly then, okay. but he's the guy that actually introduced him to me because we went to the same high school. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that, and then you know, Des sent a text message to us, and he's like, Check this band out. And I'd never heard of AOL Nation before, and we just looked it up on YouTube and listened to it, and it was just kind of like a universal response amongst <laughs> all of us all at once. Like, yeah, we could do something cool with this song. This is, uh, this is an interesting tune. Are you guys playing, to, uh, playing that song tonight? We are, yes. Awesome. Can't wait to hear it. All right, now, is there any inspiration behind your music? Uh, well, inspiration. Is, like from maybe yeah, other bands or like, like what's your main source of inspiration, I should say? You know, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, it's obviously when I was a kid, I was very much inspired by Metallica, Pantera, Megadeth, and, you know, Def Leppard when I was really young. Because I started listening to heavy metal when I was like five or six years old, mm -hmm. maybe even younger. And actually, I might have even been four just uh, had older brothers and sisters that were addicted to MTV so okay. I was always sitting there watching it with them and when MTV was MTV it was actually good yeah it was actually good and all they did was play was music videos except for that show like Remote Control you know that was probably the only non that was you know game show about music videos but uh, I don't really listen to a lot of Metallica even these days um if I have a chance to go see them live, I always go and see them. They still are, you know, will always be one of my most favorite bands. But I don't, I don't look to Metallica for inspiration these days. Um, I kind of have a more of a tendency to pay attention to just good songwriting, mm -hmm. and uh, um, especially when it comes to like guitar solos and riffs, like phrasing. I'm not interested in playing a million miles per hour, you know, and I never really was. And uh, I admire guys like Jerry Contrell and uh, Bjorn from In Flames. You know the way they, you know, they obviously shred, but they're not like Ingve Momstein or mm -hmm. you know dudes like that. That they just 
their guitar speaks to you in a way. It's almost like it's it's singing to you. And yeah. I just like the way that they they phrase their their solos, their riffs, and um, that's kind of what I've been striving to achieve it with my own writing. All right, very cool. All right, now what would be your like biggest improvement? from when you guys started Devil Driver to where you guys are now? Like, have you matured a lot? Have you just got a lot faster with your music? Or, like, what do you think? Well, you learn as you go. I think you learn what to do, what not to do. And I think, you know, Winter Kills being a good example of that, we did kind of sit back and went, all right, look at everything that we've written and what has really worked out and what has not worked out. And um, I think we use that as a little bit of a tool for direction for Winter Mm -hmm. Kills to kind of you know, learn from you know, what do we do well and mm-hmm. what do we not do well. And uh, personally, and I mean, sometimes songs that we don't think are very good, you know, get the best response from the crowds and vice versa. But, uh, and just, you know, for me too, uh, gear wise, just what to bring on tour and what not to bring on tour and what works well. and. Um, embracing technology these days. I mean, I, you know, this is my first tour using in-ear monitors, and mm-hmm. I absolutely love them, you know, right here, you know, these little guys. And, uh... David, 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 see, see, fucking band, man. Sprite, Always son. messing with the fucking video <laughs> interviews, man. Watch out. Uh, Sprite, son. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's great. I can, it, uh... We do monitors from the stage now, and mm-hmm. there's a Behringer has this awesome piece of gear called an X32 board that uh, it gets connected to a router. I can hook it up to my phone or iPad, and I can literally me and my tech can mix my own sound on stage. That's real cool. From my phone or an iPad, it's 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 amazing, and uh, that's something that you know I didn't even couldn't even imagine I would be able to do ten years ago. I feel like that makes life a lot easier. <laughs> it does make life a lot easier, and. Uh, no more fights with monitor guys on stage anymore or, mm-hmm. or just be getting frustrated to, to the point where you want to kill the monitor guy there's a lot of clubs we, we've never taken a monitor guy with us but a lot of times the person doing monitors is uh, at the bottom of the barrel at the uh, at the venue mm-hmm. and a lot of times they don't really know what they're doing Blaine, I've experienced that before watching a lot of bands uh-huh. yeah. alright uh, so where do you guys see yourself like in 10 years like still playing with Devil Driver like maybe a new project who knows man I mean I read in a book one time that the lifespan of most musicians and making a career out of being, you know, doing this for a living usually lasts about two and a half years, and I'm on my tenth year now, so I have far, uh, you know, gone past that. But for myself, um, I mean, obviously, you know, bands don't go on forever. I like to go on, you know, like like to go on for as long as possible. I still like touring and mm-hmm. still working with the guys, but uh, I've been doing producing and mixing and a little bit of mastering on the side when I'm at home and I'd like to continue doing that I've just uh, been the last year I moved into a new house and I've been building a studio and after this tour I'm finally going to be able to move all my equipment in there and uh, kind of see where that takes me sounds like a pretty solid plan so far mm-hmm. alright man last question uh, what can we expect from like all the bands tonight like a lot of big stuff going on like- yeah well fit for an autopsy Fucking solid band, uh, Revocation. They're probably like the most intricate, diverse. You know, they have like this thrash. You know, but then they can be very melodic, and then sometimes they get sound straight up like they're influenced by Primus. <laughs> um, Whitechapel. You know, a lot of people already know about them, and I mean they're just fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we've got uh, Rivers of Nile. And you know, and Carnifex is probably next to Whitechapel is probably my second most favorite band on the tour. I really enjoy watching them. They're just all good bands, and it just seems to uh, go over really well with every crowd. I feel like it's a pretty solid lineup. It is a very solid lineup. It's a good tour. So yeah, all right, man. That was all I had. I appreciate it. So without that.